Hello 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 everyone. In this video I bring you a compilation of all the procedures that I have done on the Amazon Fire TV stick so that you can save it and have it all in the same video without having to be looking for things separately. I have put the videos in order more or less since we unpack the device, set it up and do basic things at the beginning and then I have left for later the more optional or complex things. Also, the video is divided by chapters so you can access the part you are most interested in more easily. So guys, having said that, let's get started. In this video we are going to take a look at the installation and setup of an Amazon Fire TV stick, in this case the 4K Max. First of all let's look at the contents of the box. We have on one side the power adapter to power the device. We have the micro USB cable to be able to connect it to the mains, as I said before. We find two batteries for the controller along with the instructions. To finish off we have the remote control, which as you can see is very small, then we see a little in detail, do not worry. We continue with what is the Fire TV stick itself, the device that is connected to the television. And finally an HDMI extension cable in case it is necessary to make the connection on our TV. As you can see the remote is quite small and quite light, it is handled quite easily. At the top we have the on, off button of the device along with the Alexa button. We continue with the directional wheel that will serve us to move through the menus and in the center of that will we have another button that is not appreciated, but good is the OK selection button. Below we have more control buttons, in this case back, home, play or pause, mute or volume up and down. And to finish we have four shortcuts, in this case of four applications that we will normally use and that are Prime Video, Netflix, Disney Plus and Amazon Music. On the other hand we have the device itself, the Fire TV stick which is the one you are seeing right now. In this case here we only have two connections, one input which is micro USB to power it with the cable that we have seen before and on the other hand we have a male HDMI connection to connect it to the TV. In this case we could use here the hose in case our television does not fit the Fire TV stick, we cannot put it for some reason or because it is too tight or whatever, because we have this HDMI extension that gets very easy, it is very simple and which can allow us to more easily put the Fire stick on our television. The first thing that I want to comment before beginning with the initial configuration of the Fire stick is that in a first instance I have connected it without the network adapter, I have connected it directly to the USB of the TV, it means that I have not used the adapter. Later we will see what happens, do not worry, but so that you know it by the screen that is going to appear in a few moments. To begin with the configuration of the Fire Stick the first thing that is asked us is to configure the remote control. For it what it puts us there is that we press the home button of the remote control for 10 seconds, so we do it. Once this is done it recognizes the remote control and we press the play button to start. To begin, here we select our language, in this case I am going to select Spanish, everyone can select the one they want. And attentive because next you are seeing the message that has appeared to me because I have connected the fire stick directly to the USB of the TV without the network adapter, where it tells us that the USB port is incompatible and that it is not giving enough power. Let's use the USB cable and the included power adapter. Although it says below that we can continue without the power adapter, don't do it. I've been testing, I've been trying and the message keeps popping up. It is a constant incompatible, incompatible, incompatible USB port. I don't doubt that maybe it can work but it doesn't work right, it doesn't give you the correct operation. So, as I have done, you connect the Fire Stick TV with the built-in network adapter. Use a power plug and connect it to the mains. The next step will be to connect to a Wi-Fi network. In this case, well I'm going to select my home network, set the password and connect. And once I establish the Wi-Fi connection, what the device is going to do directly is just check for updates. So in this step, we let it do its reboots until it lets us get back into action. Once it finishes the updates, in the next step, it will ask us to identify ourselves with our Amazon account. If we do not have an Amazon account, we can create one, but in my case, for example, as I have Amazon Prime and I already have an Amazon account, I will register with my own account. To do this we click on Identify. On this screen it will give us two options, Identify us online or Identify us with the QR code. 
For me it is easier to identify ourselves online, which is what I am going to do. Anyway, I also want to show you the bottom part where it says press the three lines to identify yourself with the remote control. If we press it, what it does is to pass to another screen in which we can put our data manually, the mail and the password. But well, in this case, I am going to put to identify online. As you can see, you have to enter this web page, amazon.es code, enter your account and your password on this web page and then here you will see the code that you have to enter. As you can see, now I'm going to show you the screen on the computer where it appears that you have to enter the code. We enter that code and it's super simple, because it does everything by itself, it registers, signs up and everything. And once we have done everything with the computer, we get the message that your registration has been completed and as you can see the fire stick is already doing things by itself. Right now it is already discharged, asks us if we want to register the account, we give in my case then to continue then asks us if we want to save the Wi-Fi password. Then we save it too and after a few settings, among other things the remote control for example, which is what you are seeing now, we go to a section where it tells us that it is going to play music. This is to check if the controller is working properly. What it is going to do now is to play a sound from the television, I am going to be quiet now so that you can listen to it. with what you are going to see now the remote has been synchronized directly and we can control the volume of the TV and therefore the volume of the fire stick also with the remote of the fire stick. This allows you to raise and lower the volume of the TV directly with the fire stick remote control. Once we check that the volume goes up and down perfectly, we give yes and it says that the remote has been configured correctly. Now comes the moment to choose the applications that we want to have installed on our fire stick. In this case this is totally personal, in my case I have selected YouTube, Disney+, Netflix and Twitch. Once we have selected them we click on finish. The next thing that tells us is if we want to put parental control, because in this case I am not going to put parental control. Here we are given a series of instructions or guidelines or aspects of the Fire TV, we give it to understood and continue. Now we select with which profile we want to log in the Fire TV. As you can see below we are already getting updates of the applications and once we have it clear, we enter the profile and we have the main menu of the Fire TV stick. The operation of the Fire stick is very simple, the truth is that it is very basic. From the main screen which is the one we have here. On the left we have the profile selection to select another profile if we would like to change it. Then we have the magnifying glass to search to make a search. In this case from here we can search for applications as well as movies or series. Then we have the home section which is nothing more than the main page, it is like the home where there is a collection of movies, series, and so on that we can see. We continue with the live section where we will recommend different applications where we can watch live content and finally we have the section my space where we will see the watch list that we have configured in our prime video. In the line on the right we have the applications that we have previously installed, they will appear there on the main screen. With the three little squares on the right we can access the summary of all our applications and now to finish with the gear wheel on the right we can enter the settings and from here we can change all kinds of settings for the fire stick. Add Bluetooth devices, control the equipment, add things with Alexa, preferences, applications, screen and sound. From here we can configure many things on the device. In this video we are going to learn how to install applications on our Amazon Fire TV Stick device. Once we check that we are connected to the internet, we are going to go to the home, to the main menu of the Fire Stick, and we are going to look for the application store. To do this we can access from the main bar where it says App Store, which you have there in orange, or we can also access by going to the search magnifying glass and down as you see App Store. We enter the App Store and from here is where we will be able to install applications for our Fire Stick device. The App Store in this case is divided into different sections. First we can search using the magnifying glass, we can do an exact search for the application we are looking for or want to install. Then we have the section Apps Library where it tells us the applications that we have installed on this Fire Stick. We continue with the Featured section, where here we will simply find by different sections 
the most downloaded or most prominent applications that we can install. We continue with the game section, where as never better said, here there are games to play with the fire stick. I have not tried any, but there are different fairly basic games to pass the time. Some are free and others are paid. Finally, we have the section all categories, where we see all categorized applications, each within its section, and from which here we can access absolutely all applications. Let's proceed now to install a fairly simple application. We are going to install, for example, Movie Star Plus. Imagine that I want to install Movie Star Plus on my Fire Stick. In this case, I could look for it with the magnifying glass, I could look for it in Featured. But I go to all categories, I go to Entertainment, I look for Movie Star Plus, I enter, and at the moment, as you see, it says Get Free Download. Click there, where it says Get Free Download. As you can see, the installation is super fast, and once we have the application installed, we get a side notice as you are seeing that an app has been installed and some ways with which we can open the application. It's very simple, but there it tells you a little bit where you can find the application you just installed. Once we have it clear, we hit understood and simply go back to the main menu and easily from the home, we can access our Movistar Plus app which is newly installed. We could also go from the top bar, entering my apps. As you can see, Movistar Plus is installed below. We would simply give Movistar Plus and it will open perfectly, without any problem and fully usable. Well, guys, In this video, we are going to learn how to uninstall applications on our Amazon Fire TV Stick device. If you have installed any application and when the time comes you want to uninstall it, we will have to do the following. From the main menu of our Fire TV Stick, we will go to the right of everything. Just before the input wheel of the settings, we have the section My Applications, the one that comes out with the three little squares. Once we are there, we enter and go down to where it says My Apps. From here, where it says My Apps and Games, we will have to select the application of which we have installed and we want to uninstall. In any of the one we want to uninstall, we get on top, press the three little lines of the remote control, and as you can see, a side pop-up menu opens on the right side where we have to select, among other options, the one that says Uninstall at the bottom. Once we press it, opens another larger pop-up menu, in which we are told that the application will be uninstalled, and if we really want to confirm the uninstallation, if what we want is to remove it, we go down to where it says Uninstall and click on it. In this way, you see how after a few seconds, the application that we wanted to uninstall disappears. Stop using memory on the device, and then we have it removed. Hey everyone, in this video, we are going to learn how to update the firmware of our Amazon Fire TV device. This process is super important as it ensures that we have the operating system of our Fire TV device always updated and thus always have as many applications and features as possible. The first thing we have to take into account is that the Fire TV device is connected to the internet. To make the check, we will go to the settings wheel, this we have here, we go down to where it indicates network, we enter and as you can see we have it connected to a Wi-Fi network. Once we have this check done, we will have to go back to the same menu, the settings menu, this time we go down down to where it says My Fire TV, click on it, click again where it says About. And then go down to the bottom, where it says install update. As you can see here, I already have an update available because I had not done it before. If you do not have any, or you have not looked for it because it will put you to check for updates. In this case, we will do the process live as you are seeing. We will click on where it says install update. And as you can see, it tells us that it may take a few minutes. Let's wait. And after a few seconds, the truth is that it has been virtually no time. As you can see, here changes, no longer puts install, but puts check for updates to search for new updates. But in this case, on the right, gives us the current firmware version, which we have right now. When you have done the last check that is today and below, tells us that the Fire TV is updated. So that even if we give to check for updates, no longer does nothing more, just stays there because we have the latest version. Everyone, In this video, we are going to see how we can update the applications on an Amazon Fire TV stick. The first thing I want to comment before starting with the video is that normally and as a general rule, a Fire TV stick will update all applications automatically.
This means that even if you do not notice or do not see any notification at all, in the background, whenever an application has a new version, the Fire TV stick will automatically update it. Although, well, I have found in some cases that the Fire TV, I do not know the reason obviously, does not update applications automatically, either because the device is not working properly or because, for example, you have automatic updates disabled. Anyway, having said this and so that you know that, normally, the Fire TV will update the applications by itself, let's see how we can quickly access to at least check if there is any update of any application and the Fire TV, for some reason, has not done it. To do this, being in the main menu of the Fire TV stick, let's go to the section My Applications, which you have it here on the right side, right next to the settings wheel. This you are seeing with three squares and a plus. Once you enter the section My Applications, you will see all the applications that you have installed on your Fire TV stick. To find out if any application has or does not have an update pending, you simply have to get on top of the application, for example, in this case I will put Crunchyroll, press on the remote control the button with the three little stripes and in the drop down menu we will click where it indicates more information. Now, as you can see, in this menu I see directly here on the left open, that means that I have no pending update of this application. In case I did have an update pending, right here, where it says open, it would not say open, but it would say update. That is the big difference and the only way in which we can know if an application has some update to do or, as in my case, because it does not have it and it is already in the latest version. Before finishing, I want to clarify that this procedure only works for applications that we install natively on the Fire TV stick from the App Store, such as Crunchyroll, Netflix or Disney+. Any other application that you have installed externally and not downloaded through the App Store of the Fire TV stick, you will have to do the update process in a different way, either by re-entering the APK, reinstalling the application or re-downloading it. This procedure obviously you can try it with more applications in case you want to check, in this case, for example, as you can see, I also have Disney Plus fully updated, but maybe if there is an application that does not work well, if it crashes, it is slow or any other type of problem, it could be that it is because you are missing an update. If not, if you have it already updated, as in my case, and the application is still malfunctioning, then I recommend you to uninstall and reinstall the application. In this video we are going to learn how to clear or clear the cache of the applications on our Amazon Fire TV stick. There are times when some of the applications that you have installed on your Fire TV stick may suffer some error, that you go slow, that you give you some failure or simply that you do not work properly. In this case, the first thing you have to try is to clear the cache of the application. Clearing the cache does not involve any risk. We will simply delete temporary files that are not used for absolutely nothing and we will release the application load, that is, we are going to refresh it a little. To do this on the Fire TV all we have to do is first go to the right side of the screen to the settings wheel. From here we will go down to the options and we will look for the one that indicates apps. Once inside apps we will have to go down to where it says manage installed apps. As you can see, what appears here is a list of all the applications that we currently have installed on our Fire TV stick. As you can see, to the right of each one it indicates cache. This is what is occupying the cache memory of each of the applications that we have installed. In this case, for example, we are going to look at YouTube. If we enter, as you can see, on the right we still get the same data and we can see that it is occupying a cache memory of 201 kilobytes. In this case it is not much but we are going to clean it anyway. For it, in this same list, inside the application that you want, we lower until where we find the option clear cache. As you can see here it says clear data, then we see it. Once above clear cache we will simply have to click on the knob and, as you can see, down the cache has dropped to zero bytes so right now it is not occupying any kind of cache memory. Once we've done that we'll also have the option to clear data. This is a bit more in depth, this erases absolutely all the data from the application and leaves it as if we had just installed it. In fact if we click on it, as you see on the right, we get a warning that says all the application data will be permanently deleted. This includes settings, files, accounts and databases. 
What it means is that the application will remain as newly installed and in case we had any account set it will be deleted and we will have to put back our account with our username and password. As well as if we had any downloaded file inside the application or any type of resolution or file type configuration. Hello everyone. In this video we are going to learn how to change the screensaver of our Amazon Fire TV stick. As I'm sure you already know, when we are a long time without using the Fire TV stick or move absolutely nothing from the remote control, we get a screensaver that covers the entire screen and usually, well, are usually random images offered by Amazon of landscapes and that sort of thing. But I do not know if you know that this can be modified and we can put the images we want as a screensaver. The only thing we will need is to have an active Amazon Prime account. That is, we have to pay Amazon Prime since we will use the Amazon Photos application, which we only have available if we have Amazon Prime. To do this, the, the first, first thing we have to do is go to the settings, to the right of all, and look for the section that indicates screen and sound. Once inside screen and sound, as you can see it is quite clear, we have to click on screensaver. Now, back here now you are seeing a sample of the images that Amazon usually shows in the screensaver. As you can see, as a current screensaver it tells us that we have the Amazon collection on. That means that Amazon is going to be placing totally random pictures as screensavers, as I say, usually landscapes, but this can be changed. To do this, we place here where it says current screensaver, we click on it and instead of Amazon collection, we are going to select the section my photos. Once we select my photos, you will see how it changes and there you have it, different images that we have in our Amazon Photos gallery will appear. What happens is that when you select this, what the Fire TV does is to show all the images that we have in our Amazon Photos gallery randomly. It is pulling them one after another, so there are some like this one you are seeing that is vertical and does not look good on the screen. To change this, I recommend first of all that you go to your Amazon Photos, you download or upload photos or images that you want to go out of wallpaper, images that are beautiful, then something that you like you and put them in favorites. You put 4, 5, 6, 8, 10 photos or 10 images, you mark them as favorites and once you have them in your Amazon photos marked as favorites. You go here again to the current screensaver and instead of selecting my photos, which shows you the entire Amazon photos gallery, you select favorites. That way, when you select favorites, Amazon will only show the images you have selected. In this simple way you will be able to have any image you want in the screensaver. Everyone. In this video we are going to learn how to pair a Bluetooth device, either a headset or a speaker, to our Amazon Fire TV stick. This process is going to be very useful for people who don't have Bluetooth on the TV and want to connect some sort of device to it, as I said before, a speaker or a headset. There are cases where, well, either you want to listen to the TV better and you want to connect a speaker to make it louder, or, in other cases, you might want to connect headphones because you want to listen to the TV yourself and you don't want to disturb others. So, in this case, the Amazon Fire Stick TV does allow you to connect a device via Bluetooth and that's what we're going to learn. That's why I say that it's going to be, above all, useful for people who don't have Bluetooth on the TV, because, through the Fire Stick, you're going to be able to connect a Bluetooth device to it. The process is very simple. Once we are in the home menu of our Fire TV stick, we will go to the input wheel on the right of all, which are the settings. Within the settings, we will look for the Bluetooth remotes and devices section. Once we are inside, we go down to the bottom where it says other Bluetooth devices. We enter, we give it to add Bluetooth devices and, at this point, our Fire TV stick is already searching for devices. That is to say, at this moment it already has the Bluetooth open and we can already connect the device. In my case, I am going to connect a Bluetooth headset. In this case, these cool Oxford, I want to connect them to my Amazon Fire TV. So, at this point, all I have to do is turn on the headphones, put them in pairing mode, which in this case, for example, is done by simply turning them on. So I'm going to turn on the headset, we press the button, we wait for the LED to blink like it's in Bluetooth active, Bluetooth pairing mode active, and we're just going to wait a little bit for both devices to recognize each other. And, as you can see, quite quickly, our Fire TV stick has recognized the cool Oxford wireless headphones and, in this way, we can now connect them. 
we simply go to the remote, press OK, press the center button and, as you can see, the pairing is fully automatic, we do not have to do anything and the device is fully connected. From this moment on, all sounds coming out of the Fire TV stick will come out of the Bluetooth headset and nothing will be heard on the TV. As you can see, whether we want to disconnect or unlink the headphones, it is very simple. If we do not want to use them, but we do not want to unlink them, we are going to give to the central button of the control, to the button to select, to the OK and, this way, only they will be disconnected. And if, on the other hand, we want to unlink them because we are not going to use them again, then we will have to press the three lines of the remote control and the process will be just as simple. Everyone. Well, in this video we are going to learn how to connect a PlayStation 5 DualSense controller with our Amazon Fire TV stick via Bluetooth. The first thing we have to do from the main menu of the Fire TV stick is to go to the right of the settings entry wheel, we enter and we go to the section controls and Bluetooth devices. Once we are here in this section we will go down to where it says game controllers. We enter game controllers and as we give the option to add controllers. At this point our Fire TV stick is already in synchronization mode, so at this point it is already looking for controllers. Once we are at this point we take our PlayStation 5 controller, our DualSense, and we will also have to put it in synchronization mode. To do this what you have to do is take the DualSense controller and press the Share and PlayStation button at the same time for a few seconds, until you see that the DualSense light starts flashing blue quickly. Once you have it in this mode you wait a few seconds and you will see how quickly, there you have it, the Fire TV stick finds the command as wireless controller. Now click here above where it says wireless controller and as you can see already puts linking the controller and after a few seconds we already appears as a connected device. In this way as you can see not only we can play but with the play controller we can handle perfectly and without problem our Amazon Fire TV stick device. Now I have randomly downloaded a game, in this case the Asphalt 8 and as you can see it works perfectly with the PlayStation 5 controller. It has not given me absolutely no problem. I have been able to play perfectly a couple of races and even before starting to play the game has recognized the controller perfectly and has shown me a screen with the controls so it is even fully compatible with for example this game. Finally if what we want is to disconnect the controller or unlink it in this case as we return to settings, we return to go to controls and Bluetooth devices. We return to click on game controllers and where wireless controller appears which is where we had linked it as you see if we give the three little stripes on the controller unlink it and then press select to disconnect it. In this way the controller is completely unlinked. In this video we are going to learn how to manage our Amazon Fire TV stick with the cell phone through the Amazon Fire TV app. The first thing we have to do, of course, is to download the Amazon Fire TV app on our smartphone. You have it available on both Android and iOS. Once downloaded, when we open it, the first thing we will be asked is permission to use Bluetooth. Next is the local network permission to be able to use the basic functions. Now it asks us if we want to search for devices. And here, if we want to activate or not the notifications. Now, as you can see, the mobile is already directly starts to search for devices and, after a moment we see the Fire TV that we have connected at home. As I said, make sure that both are connected to the same Wi-Fi network. Once it has found it, we will click on it. It appears to us connecting. And now it will ask us for a four-digit code that we will have to enter. It is 7258. So we go to the cell phone and enter 72558. There it is. As you can see, it's linked correctly and we can now use our cell phone as a remote for the Amazon Fire TV stick. Basically, as you can see, we have practically the same functions as with the conventional remote. We have the arrows to move around the Amazon Fire TV and then we can also go down, up or, if we want to get to any of the options, we can give it directly, for example, settings. And the central button is the enter button, to enter the different options. Apart from the conventional use of the remote control, it is true that we have some quite interesting options when using the cell phone. Like, for example, when searching. If we hit search on the Amazon Fire TV, we go here to the search box. Instead of having to be selecting the letters, 
we can press the keyboard up here. Open us a keyboard and be able to directly type the search, as you can see, without having to be pressing the keys above. Something much more comfortable than having to be pressing key by key. If we open the keyboard, we will be able to pass directly what we want to write in any search. And then, to finish, there is also a pretty cool trick that is to control it instead of with the directional arrows, with a touch control. To do this, what we will do first will be to leave here and go down, to the section more. Here inside we go to Fire TV Control and at the top we have to disable the option Direction Control. We deactivate it, we go back, we go back down to Control. We reconnect the Fire TV remote and, as you can see, the controls have disappeared, that is, have disappeared what are the directional arrows and the OK button. In this case, as you can see now, what we will have as if the device is tactile and we can control it by sliding up, down or sideways. Even when we want to just tap it, it will go wherever we want it to go, which, as you can see, is a pretty convenient way to operate the Fire TV. In this video we are going to learn how to operate our Amazon Fire TV stick with the TV remote. Nowadays, it is becoming more and more common to have more devices connected to our TV at home, and these devices, in many of the cases, have their own remote control so in the end we find ourselves in a situation where we need four or to be able to operate each of the devices. This can be a bit cumbersome, so the method we are going to see today will allow us to simplify the use of the devices, since we can use them simply with the TV remote control. As you can see, I am now using the remote control of my TV, from the LG, and using the arrows I can operate the Amazon Fire TV stick without any problem. To achieve this, all we have to do is go to the settings of the Amazon Fire TV stick, to the settings wheel, go to the display and sound section, enter inside and look for the option below that indicates HDMI CEC device control. This system what it tries, as I said before, is to simplify all the devices that we have connected by HDMI to the TV and that all work through the TV remote, so we can group everything we have connected by HDMI and handle it with a single command. This option you have to have it active. If, as you see, I deactivate this option, the TV remote control stops working, there it is, it does not work anymore, and only the Fire TV works with its own remote control. On the other hand, if I turn this option back on, as you can see, the TV remote works again without any problem. As a general rule, the HDMI CEC function is enabled as standard on virtually all televisions, but if by any chance you activate the option on the Fire TV from here, as you are seeing, and the TV remote still does not work, you will have to activate it on the TV as well. In this case, I and my DLG TV would have to go into settings, now you are going to see it, I go to connection, let's see if this looks good, there it is, I go to connection, inside connection I go to device connection settings, and here I have, as you see, symboling HDMI CEC. With this option activated is the one that synchronizes the devices connected by HDMI. Everyone. Well, in this video we are going to learn how to share the screen of our cell phone, either an Android or an iPhone, with our Amazon Fire TV stick device. Okay, so the first thing we need to do to start the process is to go to the Fire TV stick app store and download an app called AirScreen. So once we're in the app store we're going to go to search, we are going to put air and well just putting this as you see the first search is already air screen. We click on air screen, it is this application that you see here, ok. We enter inside the application and from this screen here we download it. You click here to download, it will take a few seconds to download, we wait a little bit. There as you can see and appears installing and after a few seconds the application is installed and we can open it directly from here so we click on open and start. Before we start I do want to comment that this application as you have seen is completely free, you do not have to pay anything for it or to use it, so you can install it without any problem from the official app store of the Fire TV stick because it is in it and you will not have to pay anything. As you can see in the first screen that appears to us from the application tells us that AirScreen can allow this device to receive screen mirroring, photos, music, videos and other media from phones, tablets and laptops via AirPlay, Cast, Miracast or DLNA. This means that we will be able to share the screen of both our Android phone and our iPhone, as well as from any laptop either Windows or Mac, as long as, 
of course, the phone has the possibility and function of screen sharing. Remember that not all phones have the screen sharing function, so with some devices you will not be able to do it. Okay, let's go a little bit further, we click it to continue and in the next step what it tells us is that both our Fire TV stick device and the device from which we want to share the screen must be connected to the same device. The screen must be connected to the same Wi-Fi network, so once you have both the Fire TV and the device connected to the same Wi-Fi network, we click on confirm. This step I've checked and you do not need to do it, okay, you do not need to put any QR or anything like that, simply click on the top X, there as you see, to close the window. Are you sure of the wizard? Yes, you click it like this, exit the setup wizard and takes us directly to the main page of the application. As you can see in the center I see ASAFTKA, okay, this is the name by which the device will appear to us to be able to share the screen. Besides commenting also that on the right side of the application we have a small summary with which we can see what type of connection we have and how will be the sharing. In this case as you can see I have almost all the little stars complete and it says that the performance can be excellent, so no problem. The first thing we are going to do is to share the screen of an Android phone so you can see that it works without any problem. So once we have located an Android phone with screen sharing capability and connected to the same Wi-Fi network, then we go to the screen sharing option on the phone, in this case we have it here. Send screen. Simply click on it and as you can see we get the name you see there, ASAFTKA, OK, and it says cast. Just click on it. We are going to give him to begin now. And as you can see here and it appears to us connecting. And after a few seconds we have the screen of the cell phone duplicated on the TV. In this case the quality of the screen duplication is not quite good, has a resolution a little bit lower than what we usually see in this type of program. But well it lets us do the screen sharing without any problem and well that is already appreciated. As you can see there is a little bit of lag, okay. It goes with a little slowdown since I use the phone until it comes out on the screen, but well for online games you will not be able to use it, but you can use it to share any other type of content. In this case as you can see we can share without any problem, for example YouTube, okay, there is no problem sharing. We can also directly put any YouTube video, right, and it will work without any problem. We can rotate the screen of the mobile and directly putting it horizontally it will also appear horizontally on the screen and as you can see right now I have put a video from YouTube and it can be played without any problem. Apart from this we can also go to the image gallery and we can see any video that we have in the gallery, as you are seeing now, this is a video that I have in the gallery of the phone, as well as if we want to see any photograph we will also be able to see it without any problem. We will be able to see any photograph. Even zoom in and out directly in the zoom also on TV, as you can see in an Android it works without any problem. Now we are going to make the disconnection, for that we go back to the option to send screen, we press over and we give it to disconnect and at this point stops sharing and returns to the main screen of the application. And now before we finish the video let's quickly see how to do it with an iPhone so you can see that you can also do it through AirPlay. So on an iPhone being equally connected to the same Wi-Fi network we will go up to the drop down menu and here these two little squares that we have here we press and we'll see how quickly we also see the same name. So we click on and as before we wait a few seconds to make the connection, there is beginning to connect and we have it. We have our iPhone shared on the Fire TV, as you can see the full sharing of the iPhone screen and then I have to say that although the resolution is a little better than with the Android phone that we have used before, it's obviously not quite the same as what we see on the iPhone, so we're going to have a little bit lower resolution, as well as still having a little bit of motion lag. As before we can open without problems the YouTube application and put any of the videos to see it directly on TV. As well as in the gallery section we can put any photo or video. Finally if we want to stop sharing screen with our iPhone we return to the top pop-up menu click on the two squares and click stop duplication. That way we stop cloning screen and return to the main menu of the application. Everyone, in this video we are going to learn two ways to restart our Amazon Fire TV Stick device. There are times when you may sometimes notice that the Fire Stick is a little bit slower, there is an application that does not open or takes a long time to open, 
or in general you have some kind of problem with the device. In these cases it can be that the only thing that the device needs is a restart. That is to say that everything is turned off and then turned on again so that the applications that maybe are giving conflict can be closed and stop doing it. When doing the reboot can be done in two different ways. The first will be going to the settings section here to the right wheel down to my Fire TV and within this section we can give it where it indicates reboot. Pressing restart tells us that the Amazon is going to restart. We give it to restart. It tells us that the device is shutting down. And as you can see after waiting a few seconds to restart the device is already turning on again, has restarted, has been turned off and is now reopening. Now it will take a few seconds until the menu comes up again. There we have it. And as you can see, we have restarted the Amazon Fire TV stick from the operating system, from settings. And the second option in this case, we will have to do it from the remote control and we will have to do a combination of buttons. In this case, we'll have to hold down the OK button, the center one, let's say this one right here, along with play and pause. So we simply press both keys at the same time during some seconds. And as you can see, it tells us the same thing, that the Amazon is restarting. And as you see, just like before, after a few seconds, the device restarts again and we go back to the main menu, but already with the background apps closed and everything restarted. So if you had some kind of problem or something is slow, it is possible that you already work much better. One, in this video, we are going to learn how to reset our Amazon Fire TV Stick device to factory settings. In one of the previous videos, which I leave up here in case you have not yet seen it, we learned how to reset our Fire TV device in case, for example, because we go slow or there is an application that does not respond or something that we cannot install. In many cases, our problem will be solved with a reboot. But if in your case you have tried and the device still fails you, that is, it goes slow, you cannot install something or something you cannot open an application, the next step will be to reset or format, as you want to say, to factory settings our Fire TV device to remove everything that is currently on the device and leave it as if we had just bought it. It should be noted and warn you before you do it that this process is not reversible. It means that once you do it, you will lose all the information on the Fire TV stick, both installed applications and registered accounts. That said, you are going to keep the device as if you just bought it and took it out of the box. And now, once you are warned that this process is not reversible, let's see how to do it. In this case, the process of resetting the Fire TV device to factory settings, we will do it all from the remote control with a simple combination of two keys. Once we are in the main menu, all we will have to do is press the back button and the right directional button at the same time for a few seconds until we get a message on the screen. So, once we are here, we make the press. And as you can see, it prompts us with a message asking us if we want to reset the device to default settings to factory settings. We have a countdown we can choose. If we do the countdown, it restarts itself, it resets itself, and if not, then we click OK and it will do the process directly by itself. This process can take a few minutes, so let's pause this and when the main menu comes up again, we come back. As you can see, it is already shutting down. And so, after a few minutes, as you're seeing right now, we're back to the home screen as if we had just connected the Fire TV to our TV. Now we would simply have to reconfigure the device from scratch and we would be completely clean. By the way, if you want to configure the device from scratch, up here I also leave you a video where we did it. We did all the initial configuration of the Fire TV stick. Well In this video we are going to learn how to expand the storage on our Amazon Fire TV stick. As you already know, the Fire TV Stick is a great device, but many people complain about the storage capacity it has, which is usually low. As you can see, the device has neither microSD slot nor USB port to expand the storage either with pen drive or card. So, although it is not possible as standard, 
In this video we are going to learn how to do it to be able to put files such as photos and videos, as well as install applications. The first thing we are going to need is a USB device or pen drive like the one you are seeing right now. You can get one that you have at home, in this case I have taken this SanDisk with 32GB, and super important, what you have to keep in mind is that it has to be formatted in FAT32. And secondly, we're going to use this OTG cable. With this cable what we are going to get is to have a USB input on our Fire TV stick. To do this, we're simply going to connect this tip to the Fire TV stick device, there it is, and on the other side we'll have two inputs. One to connect the Fire TV stick to the power supply via micro USB, and on the other side we'll have a USB input, where we'll connect the flash drive. In this case, this particular cable I bought it on Amazon, it cost me 10 euros and as always, I leave the description below in case you want to buy one, because the truth is that it has worked super well. And once assembled, this would look like this. Now, the only thing left to do would be to connect the micro USB power here to this port, and then connect the Fire TV stick via HDMI to the TV. So let's plug it in and go through the process. Okay, so once we have everything connected, we can turn on the Fire TV stick and start the process. As I said before, we are going to have two ways to use the USB storage that we have connected. The first will be to play external files such as music, photos or videos, and the second to install Fire TV stick applications. The first thing I'm going to show you is the playback of external files. To do this, I have previously put a video of mine from my channel that I downloaded and we will play it. For this, the only thing we have to do is to download any type of external player, such as VLC, which is the one I recommend the most. As you can see, once we enter, VLC detects the USB, we are going to give it to yes we want to add it, and as we will see down here in exploring, we have the internal memory folder and the SanDisk USB folder. If we enter inside, we have different folders and below the video that we have put previously. If we click on it, as you can see, it plays without any problem. So, as you can see, we can play any type of external content from the USB. Now, having seen this, let's go to the other part, which is to install applications, which is a little bit more difficult. The first thing we have to do is go to the settings, enter the My Fire TV section and click where it says USB Drive. As you can see, we are given two options, safely eject the USB drive or format it to internal storage, which is the one we are interested in. As you can see, on the right we have a small explanation where it tells us select this option if you want the Fire TV to use the apps stored on this USB drive. Once the formatting is done, this USB drive can only be used with this Fire TV. All content on this USB drive will be deleted during the formatting process. What does this mean? It's very easy. First of all, the whole USB drive will be erased, that is, all the content will be deleted. And second, that once formatted to be able to install applications, that USB we will not be able to use it for absolutely nothing else, only to install the Fire TV stick applications. But not only that, it will only work in our Fire TV stick, in no other. So once we are clear about this, we click where it says Format to Internal Storage. As you can see, we get a window where it tells us that it is already formatting the USB drive and we will have to wait a few minutes, depending on the type of USB we have and its capacity. Once the process is finished, the Fire TV returns to the main menu and if we return to the option My Fire TV, USB Drive, we will see how this option has changed from Format to Internal Storage to what now says Format to External Storage so the unit is already formatted for the installation of applications. And now, unfortunately, comes part 2, and is that not all applications Fire TV gives us the option to move them to the external USB drive. I do not know why this happens, or if it will always be like this, but I have tried many applications and virtually none has given me the option to install on the external USB, but all are directly installed in the memory of the Fire TV stick and from there we cannot move them. In this case, I have installed several applications and if we go to Settings, Apps, and go to Manage Installed Apps, as you can see, we get both system storage, we have them there, the internal and external. 
which is also to install applications, but if we go to the list of applications, it is not clear whether or not there is any installed on the USB storage, as it does not say absolutely nothing. The only thing we can know is, by clicking on the applications, whether or not we can transfer them to the external storage. For example, Pluto TV. We click on it, nothing comes out. It means that we cannot transfer it. We go, for example, to Atris Player. We click on it, it doesn't let us either. For example, I have found that the VLC application, if we click on it, as you can see, we do have the option to transfer to USB storage, so it would not take up space on the internal memory of the Fire TV. In this particular case, if we want to transfer the application, we simply click here and as you can see, we get a message telling us to wait and that the application will be transferred to the external USB device. Once finished, as you can see, we have again to reverse here in this option and pass backwards from external storage to internal, and if we return to the previous list, as you can see, next to VLC has appeared a small symbol of a pen drive to indicate that the application we have installed on the external USB storage. Well, in this video, we are going to learn how to enable the developer options on our Fire TV Stick device and thus be able to install third-party applications, external and of unknown origin. The Fire TV Stick, despite being a device with an operating system based on Android, often does not have all the applications that we would like it to have. The clearest case of this is the HBO Max application, which is not available natively on the Fire TV Stick, so if we go to the App Store, the App Store, the application will not appear directly. But well, this does not mean that it cannot be installed. In fact, yes, you can, and if you want to do it, up here, I am going to leave a video with a very easy process to install the application. The thing, and what we come to in this video, is that there are external applications that you need to have a number of permissions to install, and that is achieved by activating the developer options. To do this, the process is very simple. We just have to go here to the settings wheel on the right side, go down to where it says My Fire TV, and once you are here, click on About. And here the only thing you have to do is to press seven times the central button of the remote control. You see twice above your model of Fire TV Stick, mine is the 4K Max. So it says that, but well, yours will put the model that you have you, simply you put there above, you press seven times the button on the remote control, and thus you will activate the developer options. In this case, it seems to me that it is not necessary because I already have them activated, but well, in this case, you will see Yasuais Desarrolladores. Once you have done this, if you press back, you can access the Developer Options menu, from which you will appear here, where it says Install Unknown Apps, Applications Compatible with the System that you have installed, and need this permission to run, such as the Downloader application, which from here we can enable or disable it. By default, for example, if you install it, it will be deactivated. But with the developer options, you can come here and activate the application to use it without any problem. In this video, we are going to learn how to access the hidden options of our Amazon Fire TV Stick. In this case, the first and practically the only thing we will have to do to access these hidden options is to download an application from the same app store of our Fire TV Stick. To do this, of course, we enter the app store and once we are inside the store, we go to the search magnifying glass. Once you are here, you have to write the word developer. Once you have it written, as you see it here on the screen, you go to the bottom, click it above and you make the search. Once you do the search, you have to be sure to download and install the correct application. In this case, as I say, the correct one is this one we have here, which is exactly called developer tools menu shortcut for Fire TV. This is the one that you have to download as you see here in the name, okay? It is neither this one, nor this one here, nothing. You have to download this one. Once you enter the application, you download and install it like any other application in the system. Once you have it installed, you can return already directly to the main menu of the Fire TV Stick and as you can see, we can already access it from both the main menu and from the menu of my applications, if we go exclusively to it. So, once you have it located, we open it. 
This menu, as you can see, is quite rudimentary. I mean, it's quite simple. It doesn't have a very elaborate skin, but it has quite interesting options to which we could not access otherwise if we did not have this application. Before touching anything, I remind you that this is a menu for developers. So if there is something that you are not sure or do not know what it is, then do not touch it to avoid any kind of problem with the Fire TV. In this application there are interesting things like, for example, directly the first option, the one that puts X-ray system. If we activate it, at the top of our Fire TV stick, we will see different data and information. We have, for example, the first one at what resolution and how many FPS the Fire TV stick is playing, as you can see, it's at 2160p in 59.93 FPS and we have it on HDMI. Then we have where it says MEM, which tells us the memory of the Fire TV. As you can see, it tells us what we have in apps, what we have in other apps, and what we have available in white. Then we also have the network to which we are connected. In this case, we are connected to my Vodafone network, so, as you can see, we have different information. In addition, if we would like to expand this information, we can also go down to the next option, which is called Advanced Options, and if we activate it, at the moment in which we reproduce any content. To the right we will see another box in which we will be able to see which audio and video codecs are being reproduced. Another interesting section is the one called Safe Zone. If your television uses the overscan system and you have always had problems because the zones of this image framing system are not respected, this function will be able to solve it. All you have to do, as you can see, is to activate the Safe Zone and the side overscan zones will be fully visible. Another interesting section is that from here we can directly activate the options for developers. In addition, if we activate them, we have below an option that in some cases can be interesting if we are a little saturated, and it is that it allows us to delete the recommendations. Like YouTube, Netflix, Prime Video, Disney+. Plus. All recommendations will be deleted. Well, in this video we are going to see what we can do when our Amazon Fire TV stick remote stops working. If you're in this video, obviously it's because your Fire TV stick remote is not working. So to walk you through the process, I've unsynchronized my remote, so if your remote isn't working, something similar will happen to you. And it is that you turn on the Fire TV stick, you press any button on the remote and instead of reacting, what it does is light up this little light that you see here above on the right. That means that the remote is not working. Something has happened to it or it is out of sync or it has some kind of error, but we can't use it with the device. The first thing you have to do in this case, or the first thing I recommend, is to do a reboot of the Amazon Fire TV stick. To do this you go to the device and unplug it from the light, either by removing the cable to the device or unplugging it from the electrical outlet. Once you have it unplugged, wait about a minute or a minute and a half and plug it back in. Turn the Fire TV stick back on and check if by doing a reconnection at startup we have managed to find the remote again. In case you do the restart of the Fire TV and the remote still does not work, we will go to the second option which is another super obvious one and is that the batteries of the remote have run out. In this case you have to keep in mind that the Fire TV remote works via Bluetooth and not via infrared like most remotes in the world, so it needs more battery than normal and also consumes more battery so it is important that you have the batteries well charged. In this case the only thing you have to do is to open the remote control from behind and change the batteries and put two new batteries. If you do this and the remote control still does not work, we are going to see other solutions now a little more complex. The first thing I want to clarify is that even if the main Fire TV remote does not work, it does not mean that we cannot use it and handle it in other ways. In this case two ways. First with the conventional TV remote control, in this case with the remote control of my LG TV, I can move the Fire TV and continue using it without any problem. In addition this will help us to reconfigure the main controller. And on the other hand we can also manage the Fire TV stick through the cell phone with the Fire TV application. For either of the two processes, up here I'm going to leave the two individual videos I have on the channel explaining both how to connect the mobile device, the phone, to the Fire TV and control it, as well as how to control the Fire TV with our TV remote. And why do I say this? Because in the next step you're going to need to control the Fire TV in any other way than with the remote, which doesn't work for us obviously. 
So the quickest option is to link the regular TV remote and make it work with this remote. Once you can operate the Fire TV, either with the cell phone or with the remote control, we will go here on the right to the settings section. We will go down to where it indicates controls and Bluetooth devices and here inside we will click where it says Amazon Fire TV remotes. As you can see in this case my remote does not work. I have made a forced reset to go with you in the process and as you can see the remote does not pull. It puts in battery offline, it does not appear in either serial number nor absolutely nothing, for which it does not recognize the remote control. What are we going to do then? Well in this case what we are going to do is, in quotation marks, trick the Amazon Fire TV stick. And how? Well, we are going to add a remote, making it believe that it is a new remote, but in reality we are going to add back the remote that has been desynchronized. To do this, using the TV remote, we will click on where it says add remote. As you can see, it tells us to hold down the home button, the little house button, for 10 seconds. So we take the remote control that we have unsynchronized and hold down the button for 10 seconds. As you can see, the remote has already been found, it's already flashing so it's already found it, it's already half-linked. Now what happens? It tells us that we have to press the central button of the previous controller, but of course, we can't do that because we are using the same controller, we don't have a previous controller. What are we going to do to fool it? We're going to press the center button or the OK button on our previous remote, which doesn't exist, but we're going to use the TV remote. So, we're going to press the center button once, and as you can see, there it is. What it has done is it has understood that this was the previous remote and so, now if we go back to take the remote of our Fire TV, it works again without any problem. As you can see, battery OK, version and serial number. Well guys, as you have seen. We have been able to make the remote of our Amazon Fire TV stick work again. In short, if the remote is not working, first step, reboot the Fire TV. Second step, change the batteries in the remote. And third step, as this we have seen a little more complex, in which you will need the TV remote to be able to fool the Fire TV a little and think that we are synchronizing a new remote, when in fact we are synchronizing the same as before. Before finishing. Then just remind you that if in some extreme case the remote continues not to work and then you give it for lost or directly has broken and you cannot continue using it because no method works for you, then I recommend that, in quotation marks, well hey, forget the Fire TV remote and use the two methods that I have told you. Or use in this video we are going to learn how to install external applications on our Amazon Fire TV stick. The first thing we have to do is go to the App Store. To the App Store, we enter and we will have to look for an application called Downloader. And we have to download this first one, the one with the orange logo and the white arrow. Once you have it installed, do not open it. Directly, you give the little house of the remote control. This one here, you give the little house and you return to the main menu. Because before we have to do a little thing. In the next step, what we are going to do is to activate the developer options to be able to install external applications. To do this, we will go to the right, to the settings wheel, we will go down down to where it says My Fire TV, click on it, in this menu click on About. To activate the options we are going to put us on top of our model, as you can see is where we appear here, my model is the 4K Max, then you situize above and from the remote control, you press the button to select the OK, the middle one, 7 times. You do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. At the 7th time you will see a message underneath. Once you have done this you return to the menu of Back. To this one of here and you will have appeared this option that appears here options for developers you enter this option and where it says install unknown apps pull size above and as you can see down here you will have appeared downloader and puts disabled well this you activate it and we can start the downloader application without any problem when we ask for access we are going to allow so they can download applications here we press ok and we get to the main menu of the application here simply what you're going to have to do is go here to the browser section. On the left where you see the orange bar, post size above and you open a kind of browser. 
Here the only thing you have to do is to go to the top bar, click on it to put a website. And what we have to do is delete what it says here and put the web apkmirror.com. Once you have it put, you give down here to go and the application will open a web page very similar to the one before. But in this case, you see how above it says APK Mirror and is another website. And we will have the main page. From this page is from where we are going to look for any application that we want to install. To do this, we will have to go here to the little magnifying glass that you have at the top right and click on it. And this is where we will search for the application. At this point, there is a very important step that you all have to follow. And is that in order to use applications or APKs on a Fire TV is important that applications are compatible with Android TV. It means that to find any application that you want to install, you will have to put the name of the application and then next to it in parentheses Android TV. If you install any application without putting Android TV or you do not put it or in the application does not appear that application will open on your Fire TV, you will be able to see it but you will not be able to use it because the remote control will not respond. Let's put for example the HBO Max app but always finished with Android TV in parentheses. Why? Because now if we search, if we hit next, as you see the app on the APK Mirror website, if we scroll down, now you have to scroll down. As you can see, it will always search for us as you see Android TV in parentheses. Having said that, if the video has been useful to you, do not forget to leave me a good like that is super important, as well as subscribe to the channel and give the little bell to not miss anything. I for my part, nothing more. As always, a pleasure and until the next video.